Hey everyone, this is Joshua NYC. I'm here to do a review of the Neo Geo NBS to AES converter. Uh, the Neo Geo NBS to AES converter was developed by the Neo Team 2006. I uh, purchased this at the uh, Neo Geo store. Uh, it was about $250, and the Neo Geo NBS to AES converter allows you to play the Neo Geo NBS arcade cartridges on the Neo Geo AES home system. Now, uh, two things that, that you really get out of this is that one, the Neo Geo NBS cartridges are generally cheaper than the AES cartridges, especially for certain titles, uh, such as the Metal Slug series, uh, the uh, Neo Turf Masters, especially the, the later King of Fighters series, which some of those games uh, for the home system can run uh, upwards of several thousand dollars, where you can acquire the NBS cartridges for less than a hundred dollars for some of those games. And also the uh, the other benefit with the uh, NBS to AES converter is that there were games that were released for the NBS that were not released for the AES. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, one of them was uh, Puzzle Bobble, otherwise known as Bust the Move, and Shock Troopers. Uh, those two games did not have an AES release. Uh, you may see AES cartridges out there on eBay, but those are conversions. Um, I checked with uh, NeoGeo.com. I usually use that as, as a reference for uh, stuff related to the Neo Geo system, and, and they had they have it listed as no home release for either of those two games. Um, so this is the converter. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, what you do is you have you have the uh, you have the connector ports right here for the MBS cartridges, and then right here you have the connector pins for the uh, for the uh, AES. Because the difference is is that the uh, the connector pins uh, for the MBS cartridges are are larger than the ones from the AES. Uh, here's an example. I got two uh, two games here. We got uh, Neo Turf Masters for the MBS. Yeah, we got Ghost Pilots for the AES. And turn it around, you'll notice that the the connector pins on the MBS are much longer than the ones on the AES. So if you try to stick an MBS cartridge in uh, in the AES, you're not going to be able to fit it. It's not going to happen. So that's the why the converter is absolutely necessary. Um, so the thing, the other thing also I wanted to point out with the uh, with playing the NBS cartridges on the home system, the games will play as if it is a home game. Uh, I know there are some games for the uh, home system. I give you an example. Uh, if you want a good example, uh, the Metal Slug series, uh, the King of Fighters series, two examples of that. Where if you play it on a home system, you'll have censorship in that you won't see the blood. Uh, or in the case of uh, Metal Slug, the blood will actually be that of a different color. And uh, also for King of Fighters, you don't see the lovely Mai Shirami. Bounce those jugs. So, yeah, you won't see that in a home version unless you activate codes. I know some of the games do have codes you can activate that stuff. So, that's another thing to keep in mind with, uh, when you're playing the NDS cartridges on the AES. It'll play as, as if it was a home game. The games do have code for both arcade and home. Alright? So, um,. Thing, another thing I wanted to point out with the converter is that you see this little switch here, a little, I don't know what you call it, but it's, it's an adjustable switch. You actually have to use a screwdriver uh, to adjust this. It basically used to adjust the video quality on it. Um, it, can, it was supposed to come with a screwdriver. I didn't get, mine didn't come with one, but the video quality on this is, is, is just fine. So I haven't had any issues with it. All right. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna play. I'm gonna play some of these games. Uh, uh, do a little bit of commentary as well. And the five games we're gonna play today are Neo Turf Masters, Shock Troopers Second Squad, Metal Slug 2, Puzzle Bobble, and Ninja Combat. So hope you enjoy. Thanks. All right, here we got Ninja Combat. Uh, Ninja Combat was one of the early uh, Neo Geo titles that came out back in 1990. 
And what Neo, uh, Ninja Combat is, it's a, your standard uh, side scroller, uh, typical side scroller beat 'em up type uh, from that era. Um, th when th in this particular game, it's more uh, more weapons based as opposed to hand in hand combat like you would see in a game like Final Fight or uh, Double Dragon. So, as you can see from the uh, introduction to how to play the game, you'll see how, how the, uh, the combat system works. Okay, here we got the first stage. So, uh, your default character that you start the game with is your standard ninja. And his initial weapon are shurikens, so you have to knock down oil drums, boxes, all sorts of things to pick up power-ups to make your weapon stronger. And also, you can pick up different types of weapons. Uh, personally, I pretty much try to stick with using the uh, with the shurikens and try to power those up. Uh, they have longer range, uh, some of the weapons are shorter range, and just sticking with the standard weapon is much easier that way. And especially when you have uh, certain parts of the stage where you get overwhelmed with enemies. So like like this part right here, um, and and also you'll notice that they'll have enemies attacking on both sides. You got to really be quick to be able to attack on both sides. Um, one of the things also is that you try to sometimes try to maintain distance between your enemies, and you'll see uh, later in the stage uh, one of the enemies is very difficult to try to beat uh, head on. So and that's why it also helps that we're. It helps to keep your basic weapon, just try to power that up, so those weapons, you see there, don't even bother. These are the enemies that I was talking about that you gotta really be careful with, and they take out a lot of energy. They usually kill you with two hits. Um, so you wanna maintain your distance from those guys, and that's the reason why you wanna keep the shuriken. So now, right now, we're coming up on the first, uh, the boss of stage one. So he usually, he will use a long, long range attack, um, swing his little swing his arms. So try to just keep on firing at him. You're gonna have to deal with other ninjas that'll come right now. So just be, always be prepared. Be prepared for that for every boss. Just about every boss probably gonna have to deal with that. So I knocked out his arm. So I'll just shoot away, and he's gonna be destroyed. He's destroyed. Okay, so now uh, the first stage is clear. So now what happens now is that every stage that you clear, what, well, usually well, the first few stages when you clear a stage, you'll also have a new companion that'll join you. So every companion has their own weaponry. So before you start, before you start the next stage, you'll be able to pick which uh, character you want to use. So uh, here I'm going to pick the elderly swordsman. So I will pick him for stage two. So I think these, as you can see, there's probably some variance in the range of the weapons between each character. So um, 
you gotta, you just gotta pick and choose for each stage. So we got these captive ladies, but they're really enemies. What a thought! And we got to deal with these fat X-Men. Yeah, these are the ones that are real pain in the ass. And you'll see them a lot, especially later in the game. They're they're a nightmare to deal with. And just like that, I already lost all my remaining lives. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna end this game here. Um, same thing. Just give you the first level and just a little bit more after that, so you get an idea get an idea how the game plays. Alright, here we got Puzzle Bobble, uh, otherwise known as Bust a Move. Uh, this is uh, one of the f one of the few uh, MBS games that did not have an AES release. Although this game was released for home consoles, I actually did own this game for the Sony PlayStation. Uh, Puzzle Bobble, part of the Bubble Bobble series. Uh, the objective of this game is you have to base you have to clear. Uh, you have to clear bunches of, of bubbles by matching bubbles of the same color. When you're able to match up three bubbles of the same color, uh, you're able to drop them from from the ceiling. And once all the bubbles are dropped from the ceiling, you move on to the next stage. Uh, as you can see for the first stage, the first stage it kind of holds your hand and uh, guides you to where you have to shoot it. Uh, a lot of accuracy is involved in being able to clear these stages. Um, and also, every few seconds, you'll see that the ceiling comes down further and further. Uh, if the bubbles uh, drop below the line uh, where you shoot your bubbles at, then the game is over. Um, so your points are based on two, there are two factors that, that, that really will really boost your score. One of them is clearing the stages in the shortest amount of time possible. And the other one is dropping bubbles when you get three in a row. So. Like we just saw there, I uh, was able to drop the bubbles on top. So when you do the three in a row, if there are bubbles underneath the three um, mobile formation that you make, uh, all the bubbles underneath will drop and you'll get points based on how many bubbles you drop. Um, so obviously the more you drop uh, per, uh, per combination, the more points you'll get. So as you can see, the... Uh, as for the further along you go, the uh, the ceiling drops a little bit at a faster pace, and also the uh, the formation of the bubbles uh, uh, at the start of the stage also gets a little bit more complex. So um, you have to be really you have to think really fast, and also uh, an important factor in this game is uh, the accuracy. So you got to be really accurate in aiming the bubbles. And we just cleared stage three. Got another 14,000 points. I think there's a, a certain limitation on uh, timing and uh, the amount of time it takes to complete a stage where if you complete the stage in more than X number of, I forget the exact uh, amount, you won't get any points for it. So uh, if you care about points, you'll want to finish these stages as quickly as you can. Yeah, I goofed there with the uh, with the green bubble. Um, it, t it takes a lot of practice uh, with the aiming of the bubbles. You just got to get used to it, know how to angle it. Uh, when you get used to that, it's, it, it gets uh, easy to be able to aim the bubbles. And if you want to try to try to line them up, try to squeeze them in there. Uh, as you can see right now, I am in a bit of uh, a bit of trouble here with the bubbles. Hopefully, I can clear this without my game ending here, but who knows. Oh, 
And that's it. And I lost my last... Uh, that's it. That's the enemy. Alright, um, so I just wanted to do a few quick stages. I uh, really wasn't looking to try to beat this game or master. Just to give you just a feel for this game. Alright, so hopefully you enjoy. Alright. Alright, here we got Shock Troopers Second Squad. Which is the sequel to Shock Troopers. Uh, the Shock Troopers series is an overhead run and gun. Um, me, I, I think of it as, uh, to me it feels like Metal Slug if it was an overhead uh, run and gun. I think of it that way. Um, this game it has some similar, aside from the difference between one uh, Metal Slug being a side scroller and Shock Troopers being overhead. There's a lot of similarities between the two games uh, in terms of the of the gameplay, the control. Um, you have a button for attack, a button for jump, uh, and a button for uh, grenades. Uh, and that you get, be able to pick uh, different types of characters. They each have uh, different types of weaponry. In this game, they also have different uh, different attributes in terms of speed, attack, power, evasive maneuver, and uh, defense. And in fact, it's in, in both uh, Shock Trooper, the Shock Troopers uh, Second Squad, and Metal Slug, you get to ride in vehicles. And also along the way, you get to pick up power-ups, which uh, which gives you new weaponry, uh, although a uh, limited amount of uh, ammo. And here we got the character select screen, like I mentioned earlier. Each character has a strength and weaknesses. I'm going to go with uh, Toy here. Uh, primary weapon is a laser. He's pretty. He appears to be a fairly well-balanced uh, character, so I'm going to go with him. And here is stage one. So here you have a, a life meter uh, and three lives, but the life meter, you, 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 that, that it does deplete very quickly when you get hit, so uh, just be very careful with that. Uh, in the first Shock Troopers, you have a life bar, but you only have one life, and the life bar takes a lot more hits to deplete the pack. And then in the Metal Slug, of course, one hit, you're dead. But you get three lives in that game. So here, uh, Shock Troopers uh, Second Squad, uh, when compared to the first Shock Troopers, graphically one of the uh, things that that that, is, that, that, the show that uh, comes out with Shock Troopers is that he, it's a lot more uh, cartoony-like uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the graphics. Uh, the first one was a little more serious, more uh, had more serious tone to it, but um, also this version uh, is two-player simultaneous. Uh, though in the uh, first Shock Troopers, you also had the uh, team uh, team battle where you able to pick three characters and switch between them at will. This game does not have that, uh, but still, I, it, it, I don't think it takes away from the game. It's, it's nice to be still in the game nonetheless. I know that I've read, I've read reviews for Shock Troopers 2 and that's uh, I think that a common complaint that's brought out. Uh, me personally, I, I don't care. I don't care either way. I, I, this game is great, regardless. Actually, I had uh, had some I had some friends over uh, a few days ago. Uh, we were playing this. It was it was fun. So I don't you know I like it. Hopefully, uh, a lot of people will agree with me as well. But hey, this is another great game. It's I don't think it's a disappointment compared to the first Shock Troopers. Facing the boss of the first stage, which is a giant truck equipped with all types of weaponry, uh, give your targets to shoot. And uh, the first uh, part of this battle, obviously, you see you fight a bunch of uh, troopers that come out, and this will go on for a little while. And then the, uh, the back of the truck will open up, and you got to deal with uh, all sorts of all sorts of firepower that you got to avoid. This boss state, this boss ba uh, battle is not too difficult. Not too difficult. 
the secret here is basically uh, when you fire, hold it and move. That way you can just be able to fire in one direction while moving around at the same time. So that really helps uh, for, for this particular battle. And also know the time your jumps when dodging those bullets like it just did right there. Alright, so we destroyed the back of the truck, so now we gotta take on the front of the truck and shoot some uh, larger waves of beams. He's a little bit tougher to dodge than the other one, so I just got hit there. And I died. Go figure. Alright, and we destroyed the first boss. So now, uh, after this stage, we're gonna see, you're going to see that you have a choice uh, between two different paths. So, uh, shock, the first Shock Trooper had that as well, except that it had that in the beginning of the game with three different paths. So, here you have it as well, though Shock two Troopers had a little bit more branching out than Part 2. So, But either way, you're not going to see the entire game in one playthrough, so it gives you more uh, an incentive to play the game again. All right, we got here Neo Turf Masters. Uh, Neo Turf Masters is the second of two golf games that were released for the Neo Geo. The uh, the first one being uh, Top Players Golf, though uh, the two games are not actually related to each other. Um, Neo Turf Masters came out in 1996 and was developed by Nazca, also known for Metal Slug. Okay, so we're gonna pick the difficulty MVS. I really don't know the difference of difficulties here. So you got a brief introduction on how to play the game, and one of the things I love about this game is the simplicity of the controls. The control scheme is very simple to use, and you know, to the game itself, the flow of the game itself is very fast paced. If you think golf, you think of a slow game, but this game moves at a very fast pace, and that's really the thing I like about it. It makes golf exciting. <laughs> Alright, so we have the introduction here, how to play, uh, how to swing, how to select your clubs. All that stuff and now we're gonna do one player game and here you have a choice between six different golfers each golfer has his strengths and weaknesses uh, for this game I'm gonna pick the shot maker which is the, uh, the German golfer uh, I think he's the best overall golfer in this game. Uh, I'll explain, I'll explain later. Uh, we have four different courses here to choose from each course of course has 18 holes and I'm gonna pick the German course so advantage the, uh, the strength of the German golfer Final in this game day. is that he's start. excellent with driving, uh, putting, and also accuracy. Uh, so when you see the, uh, the two meters for your the strength of your shot and the height, uh, when you have high accuracy, that meter moves very slow, so you can get a precise shot as to how far you want to hit it. So that's his biggest strength. His only weaknesses are recovery uh, when if he had, it's a ball into a sand trap. It's difficult for him to get a good shot off. But does not happen to me that a lot in this game, so, uh, first hole, I'm going to do uh, four holes for this game, so, I'm going to do four holes and hopefully I do really well on them. Okay, so I got a birdie here. Now in this game, when you start your game, you start off by playing three holes. In order for you to keep on going, you have to be able to shoot at least a birdie or better every time. So when you shoot a birdie, when you play your hole, if you get a birdie, you'll get that hole back. If you shoot an eagle, you'll get an additional hole back. Uh, if you, if you uh, shoot a par, you just go down, you just use up your one hole. And if you shoot a bogey, you penalize by losing an additional hole. So the way this so the so the way it works in order to be able to last the whole 18 you got to be able to shoot uh, birdies almost every time at most uh, two bars probably about two bars if you get the third one it'd be game over so you have to pretty much 
much uh, get at least a birdie almost every time out. And I just barely made that putt. Um, so the courses, they start off easy, uh, as you'd expect. And then as the further along you go, the layouts get a little bit more trickier. Uh, you'll have uh, large gaps. Uh, you'll have certain holes that uh, near the green, you'll have this really uh, steep hill, so you have to really hit the ball uh, pretty high. Uh, a lot of stuff to throw you off. But that's the beauty of it. It's an arcade game. It's supposed to be hard. Another birdie. Also, there's also in this game, you'll, uh, you'll see it usually about two points in the game. You will see uh, challenges. Uh, one of them will be the closest to the pin contest, in which um, it'll give you a record. And if you can get to the hole on one stroke, it's usually on a par three that they do this. Uh, within that distance, uh, let's say, for example, the closest to the pin, let's say, is five yards, and you hit it four, uh, you're rewarded with an extra hole. And the other challenge that also comes up in this game is the longest drive contest. Same thing, where in this case, longest drive, uh, they give you a, a, a distance that you have to beat. And if, you can, if your initial drive for that hole is longer than that, the distance that's, been, that, that's, that's stated, you're rewarded with an additional hole. So here we got a par five. This par five is pretty simple. Sometimes that can actually get an eagle on us. Shot it on this one. It's not the eagle, but I'll settle for a birdie. And did four holes, four birdies, so. As you can see, the number, the number of holes I have remaining will still be three. So you got to be able to maintain that pace for the rest of the game. So that's it. I uh, just wanted to do four holes, and I hope you enjoyed it. All right. Uh, this is the last game I'm reviewing, uh, Metal Slug 2. Metal Slug 2. The sequel to Metal Slug, I think. All right, so I'm going to show you here a uh, quick uh, demonstration on how to play the game, a uh, staple of the Neo Geo. Um, what's, that, what's actually uh, interesting here is that they actually have this as a separate option as opposed to just when you normally start the game, it'll show you uh, the, the how to play screen right away. But I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to show it to you anyway because that's just, you know, it's a staple of the Neo Geo. So, I mean, what, what, how can you, ha how can you ha not have this in here? All right. Well, Metal Slug, as everybody knows, is a side-scrolling run and gun. You usually think of Contra. Um, one of the thing I like, uh, the thing I like about the Metal Slug series, um, it's a very difficult series. I mean, I don't really know game in the series. It's easy. I mean, they are they are arcade games anyway. They're supposed to be tough. But the thing I like about the uh, about the Metal Slug series, obviously, the thing that stands out the most are the graphics. Uh, particularly the amount of detail that there is in every stage, and also the, uh, the vast amount of animation. And, and it just seems like in, in every stage there's just so much going on on screen at the same time. Uh, and it's just amazing how you know, games like this came out of the 16-bit era. I mean, we had, uh, we had to have games in the 32-bit era uh, ported over to 32 bit systems to actually be able to perfectly replicate this. Even then, it wasn't perfect. So I mean, that's just goes to, just goes to show you how advanced, uh, how advanced the system really was. And, uh, I mean, Metal Slug 2 is proof of that. Or just the whole, the Metal Slug series as a whole is, is proof of that. All right. So um, you know, your basic premise is to run from point A to point B. Uh, rescue hostages, which is very important. Uh, they provide you with extra weapons. 
uh, which you can get to use for a limited amount of uh, ammunition and also uh, extra bombs and stuff like that. Um, one of the things uh, you'll notice that you've already noticed that when you kill the enemies, you notice that there wasn't actually, well, the blood was actually white. The, um, even though I'm playing an arcade cart, it's running on a home system, so it'll play it as if it's the home version. There is censorship uh, in this game, and actually, home games in general will have censorship. I'm playing this on a, on a home US system, so it'll have the censorship where the blood is actually white. Uh, it does that. And me personally, I don't care. It, it doesn't some people make a big fuss about it. I personally, I don't. I don't so, so. Um, so every stage, you have, you have a uh, usually will have a point in every stage where you're able to mount on a vehicle. Uh, in this stage, you have uh, a camel attached with a uh, machine gun. Um, the what the for this particular stage, uh, the camel uh, actually will leave you vulnerable. So you have to be careful on this stage when, you, when, you're, when you're riding it. In later stages, you'll actually get right in the actual metal slug, which does protect you from enemy fire, albeit the, uh, your vehicle only sustained with so many hits. Um, but here, you gotta, you gotta be much more careful that you can still die. So, as you can see, one of the hostages I rescued, he was actually hidden up at the top of the screen. He actually is following me and could do projectile attacks a la Street Fighter. Now we got the first boss, which is a uh, giant aircraft. Uh, so we got soldiers coming out. Uh, a lot of a lot of the boss uh, fights in this game usually consist of two. Usually consist of at least two parts to it. That's pretty much standard uh, for this game, for this series. So, now we're being really careful here not to get hit. I actually I had to recorded several times and I just kept on dying at this part so almost finished the game straight. So now when you complete when you complete a stage, you'll get bonus points for the number of hostages you rescue. And if you die, whatever hostages you rescue you lose. So you want to keep them if you want to get big points. And also you'll get a special bonus if you complete the stage while you're still mounted in a vehicle. Like I did with the camel here, get an extra hundred thousand. So so that's stage one, Mission and that's it. I just wanted to show you the first stage, and I hope you enjoy it.